Jibe Kalavere la Amela na na larna le rata hanla mafuma hadi eli in the ladies club mo na mo kana le nyabu pedi kilo na 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 larna le kiti kam mafuma hadi arona mo na Africa bora le mo sena le bisola ka kile bo hamu swedi. And my name is Valen Kirtley. So good to be with you guys here on the Ladies Club. Greetings to you all at home and thanks for joining us once again right here on SABC2 Where You Belong. Today our conversation is about women who are driven by passion and determination. And we're joined by one of South Africa's leading women golfers, Stacey Bregman. She'll share her views on on this issue as well as so much more. You're welcome to join in the conversation. It's so easy on social media, on Twitter, at sports at SABC, at Lemon Wotswedi, at Bale and Kirtley. Just use our hashtag, hashtag the ladies club, and you'll be able to get involved in the conversation on all social media platforms, whether it's Facebook, on Instagram, or Twitter. And as Valen has already mentioned, we're discussing passion and determination. And determination obviously is the will to pursue and attain the goal or the purpose, your purpose. Well, passion is the inspiration to carry out tasks and to reach those milestones now, the passion you have along with your drive and determination is often the X factor that, that is used to be successful in whatever you put your eyes on. So before we get going with our interview, our words of wisdom today come from one of the most influential fashion icons of all time, somebody that was certainly driven by passion, mm -hmm. Coco Chanel. Uh, in order to be irreplaceable, one must always difference. Now, Chanel is one of the most powerful women in the world of fashion. She's famous for her timeless designs, trademark suits, and little black dresses. Absolutely. Chanel was always a risk taker, which made her go places, for sure. Now, she created her own empire in a world ruled by lots of men. She introduced pants for women and launched the first designer perfume when she gave us the most famous perfume, Chanel Number no. 5. Mm. Oh, Lives smells good. I can smell it, and I love that. You got to be, you got to make a difference. Yeah. You've got to be different. You got to stand out. Yeah. And, and I like that. To Owning be... your individuality. Absolutely, and being proud of it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think all of the ladies that we feature here on the Ladies Club and all the ladies that we speak about—that's what they do. They absolutely. own their power and they own their individuality. Speaking mm. about those ladies that we like to highlight, so this is something that came to our attention a couple of weeks ago. A South African hockey star, Let Damons, has decided to call time on her illustrious hockey career after making 198 appearances for the national team. She raised. She was raised in the Amasizake township in Graf Reinet. Damons grabbed every opportunity that came away to become the inspirational success story. She will now focus on teaching her budding, uh, her young ones, in fact, teaching uh, in uh, St. Michael's in Bloemfontein, in fact, my hometown. So she says that talent is definitely there and looking at the under 14 and under 13 girls. Well, you're also a hockey player. Yes, I still am actually. I'm playing on Tuesdays. Yeah. Hey, Liz. Yes. And you, you didn't tell me your secret, and I've been asking you, what are you doing? You're looking so fit. Oh, I'm looking please. so fabulous. <laughs> That's all this hockey. Okay. Well, for a quick break, we're going to uh, continue our conversation here on the Ladies Club. Remember to get involved with us on social media. Hashtag the Ladies Club. We'll be back after this. Welcome back. Please join us on our social media platform. 77 fella hashtag Yaruna in the ladies club. Hope along hore. Like you more le bomo twedi at Twitter. Baden Kurt Liliana ko Twitter at sports at SABC. Happy hope along hore. We are joined in studio by one of South Africa's leading women golfers. You work in her Stacey Brackman. She was born in Johannesburg. First picked up a golfing club. Hana did le motse ma shume le motso le mung fella. She has since become a solid performer on the ladies European tour for the past few seasons. Some of her accolades include winning the 2014 Zambia Ladies Open, the Sun International Ladies Challenge, Dimension Data Ladies Program, and Cape Town Ladies Open. Incredible accolades. Yeah, and last season's Order of Merit yes. winner when it comes to the Sunshine Ladies Tour. Mm. Her golfing journey has its fair share of ups and downs, with lots of successes and a couple of setbacks. She is an accomplished sportswoman, earning South African colours seven times for what sport? Karate, yes. Wow. And she was awarded provincial colours for athletics too. Welcome to the show, Stacey. Yeah. Thanks for having me. It's great to be on here. Okay, wow. so we've mentioned that you actually, golf is not the only thing that you're good at. So karate. how did you decide yeah. to settle on golf? Because I know that yeah. tennis was also thrown into the mix with karate and athletics. Yeah, well, to cut a long story short, I met uh, one of my coaches on the golf course. Uh, it was a Sunday afternoon. Uh, my dad was just pulling my bag. I was with a friend and uh, these guys are playing really slow in front. And he told me to 
to come join and uh, it was one of the greatest uh, Springbok golfers, Proteo golfers that, um, you know, that's, uh, that's played and Neville Sundelson and he, he took me up, up under his wing. He saw potential and he, he thought um, that I should pursue golf obviously rather than tennis. So, and I listened to him and uh, I'm really happy that, that I made that decision. But it also sounds like you come from a very sporty background, from having your full colours in karate, um, tennis as well. Why did you decide, uh, besides his influence, why did you decide on golf? I, I think uh, the bug this bit, you know, I just, I loved it. It was something different. Um, I just, it, it's a challenge in sport. Mm. It's something that, um, you know, um, it, yes, it is a, a male dominant sport, but it, just breaking grounds now with, with females coming through. And, um, you know, with tennis, unfortunately, you've you got to be a superstar by the time you, you know, you're 12, 13 years mm. old. And I didn't really have that opportunity to, to travel overseas with tennis. And uh, golf was certainly, certainly a gateway. And, and I just, I love it. It's just, I, I can't really explain it. Because it's when you, when you love something so much, yeah. um, it's just, yeah, it's just, I love it. I can't, I can't really <laughs> tell you why I chose it, but um, yeah. It's quite fortuitous as well that you had somebody like you did that helped to guide you and that was there to guide you in the right direction and help you make the decisions that you did. Yeah, no, definitely. And I, like, I, I can't thank uh, Neville enough to, you know, for helping me. Mm. And um, he was almost like a, like a father figure to me. He really took me up under his wing and he, he um, I mean... I can tell you stories when I, when I was at school, at high school, yeah. you know, when I started early mornings, winter mornings, just before school, he used to take me to play nine holes. Wow. Before right, school? Before school, I used to be cracker. Winter mornings, I could be there at 5.30 in the morning. six what? Oh. In the freezing cold. In the um, high felt too, when it's so yeah. freezing. Oh my goodness. I mean, to try to prepare me and to get, every, you know, just to make sure that I'm not losing out and I'm making all my time efficient as I could. Then I'd go to school as soon as I came back from school. I mean, I had to make sure that I was in a lift scheme. I couldn't go, I couldn't take the bus home, like, you know, mm. like be one of the cool kids and, you know, mm. um, and as soon as I got home, straight to, to the golf course, practicing, playing and homework, obviously I had to do. So, I mean, it was sometimes late nights, early, really early mornings, but uh, those are sometimes the sacrifices that you have to make when you you know, to be able to, to compete at a high level and to, and to be able to, because I started golf, I mean, you're going to say 13 years, that's young. But, it, it's, but it in, is, in essence, it's not. Um, yeah, yeah you know, for because, a new sport. Yeah, I mean, Tiger Woods started when he was yeah. two. You know, yeah. there's girls and I had to, you know, just try make ground up and, and all of that. And um, I did everything that I could to, to do that. And what wow. was the end game? Um, at that young age, I mean, now you can, it's, you, in retrospect, yes, you can see where you wanted to go. But at that early age, picking up a new sport and already throwing yourself and immersing yourself in it so much, what was your end game as a teen, barely a teenager? Yeah, um, yeah I mean, it was hard, uh, but it was enjoyable because as, like, growing up, I played so many sports yeah. and then I had to eventually pick one sport. Mm. And I had the chance of uh, getting my Kalteng school colours and, you know, doing other stuff. And I had to, I had to kind of just put, put that aside and go and, t you know, I mean, the school master and teachers at school were like, how could you just mm. give up everything? Like, yeah. you're in the first team running tennis, netball, this, and we can't let that happen, you know? I'm like, well, this is what I want to do. This is my career. And but what was is... your end goal? That's, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So... I wanted to become a professional golfer. What? That was my, I didn't want to, I was offered scholarships uh, at top universities in the States that I turned down because for me, yes, I did get my matric. It was something very important for me to get. Yeah. And I said to my parents that I would get it, mm -hmm. and I did. And after winning World Amateur and then going to Q school, I said to my parents, if I get through Q school in Europe to get my card, to be, my playing privileges mm -hmm. to be able to play in Europe, um, I'll turn pro and I'll play. If not, then I'll take up one of the top, I'll go to American, you know, do a yeah. scholarship for maybe a year or two and see how that goes. And yeah, fortunately uh, I finished second at Q school and I've been on the tour ever since. So yeah, wow. so this is something that I've always wanted to pursue. After turning pro in 2006, I mean, it wasn't as smooth as just 
going to play on the yeah. tour and now everything is sorted it it must have been quite a wake-up call for you no definitely i mean you always think you know you're dominating as an amateur mm. you're going to come out and you're going to mm. you're going to kick ass you know yeah. um and you're gonna you, you're gonna win and you everything's gonna be great you know what i mean and it was a bit of a reality check <laughs> let me tell you um i struggled the first year yeah. and people said oh first year is always just school for years you know you yeah. you gotta you gotta put in and I was like, oh, yeah, I mean, whatever. But what did whatever. you struggle with? What were those struggles? Being by myself, uh, traveling by myself. It's not just, you got to understand what people don't get about sports, men and women. Um, when you're traveling away from home for four or five months at a time and you're by yourself, you've just got your suitcase, you've got your golf clubs, you've got your caddy. Yes, that's great. And being a newbie on the tour, not having very many friends, and being a little bit introverted at that time, um, it was hard, you know. It's just, I had to be able to mature and, and, and cope with that. And um, I'm glad that, I mean, I could have given up after the first year. I was like, I've had enough of this. I don't want, why would I want a life like this? You know, I want, why would I want to be miserable? And it was, it was a hard learning curve, but yeah, I, I pulled through it and uh, made, made friends. And, you know, you, I've matured from it. What what was the decision or what was the thing that you said, you know what, actually, I'm going to try again. I'm going to come back next year. You know, I, um, I've always been strong-willed and this is what I've always wanted to do. And, you know, you always have setbacks in, in life with everything. And um, I'm not the kind of person that gives up, you know, so I... It wasn't an option for me, you know, as much as I sulked and moaned and cried and I don't want to go back, mm. you know, you always, you just have that week where it's even, I mean, even like two years ago when I had a little bit of a hiccup, yeah. you know, after I didn't do well at Q school on LPGA and then I played in Dubai, I remember I was with my manager and I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. And she was like, well, uh, you just go home, have a bit of a break, have a holiday and then you come talk to me because you're talking out of emotion mm -hmm. instead of clear thinking and here I am you know what I mean and I've had some of my best seasons since then you know sometimes you got to yes I mean it's not the law that you always have to be mm. kicked down so hard that you don't want to come back or whatever but you're going to have your your hiccups and and hard hard times and um, it's how you deal with them because that's when you learn to grow as a person and you learn more about yourself when you when you're struggling then when you when you when you're successful and you're doing well and you win a tournament you're like Oh, this is easy. Um, you don't actually know what you, sometimes you're not sure what you're doing right or what's good, like, why am I playing well, you know? Mm. And then when you're not playing well, you can kind of gauge and go, okay, well, I need to work more on this. I need to do this, but not overcomplicated, you know? And um, yeah, it's made me a stronger person having some of those, those hardships and, and breakdowns during a couple of my seasons. <laughs> sure, so I'm certainly <laughs> learning that being a professional athlete, uh, giving up is never an option and it, it's a lonely road. But let's look at the top stories where Cricket South Africa has now announced the dates for the Proteus Women's Inbound Tour against Pakistan. So the May Tour is an opportunity for the Proteus to gain valuable points for their ICC Women's Championship campaign. And it's going to comprise of three ODIs and five T20s. Sure, looking forward to more of uh, those stories. But for now, a quick break. I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to Thank you for watching the Ladies Club. Thank you so much for staying with us. Remember on social media, whether it's Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, it's so easy. Hashtag the Ladies Club. Now, looking at our leading lady today, of course, is a top uh, golfer, Lorette Maritz. Maritz made her professional debut back at the Ladies European Tour in 1988 and went on to win three Ladies European Tour titles in her career. Also coming out tops in other tournaments such as the South African Women's Open, SA Ladies Masters and the Netbank Women's Masters as well. Yeah, she started to play golf at the age of 11 and by the time she was 17, she was South Africa's top amateur golfer. Following her move to the US in 1983, Maritz was later presented with the United States Player of the Year Award. She was also inducted into the USA Hall of Fame for being the first player chosen for the eight-player All-American team. So Stacey, talking of such incredible women athletes, especially in your field, who was the most inspirational or influential in your time, I back when you were younger? Yeah, definitely Annika Sorenstam. I mean, yeah. she's... 
You've, I mean, she's her and uh, and Kari Webb. I would say are two of my top female golfers that I just, you know, that they legends to me, and um, I would like to be half of what they of what they have done for women's women's sports, you know, and uh, yeah, they they've had some some careers. Mm. How would you rate last season winning the Order of Merit here at home? Um, I know in your career you've had eight top 10 finishes on the LET but last year really was a great year because like you said it was just two seasons prior to that yeah. that you were wanting to actually throw in the towel yeah. so how significant was last year? I, I think it was pretty good um, especially I changed coaches um, just before that I started work with Grant, Grant Fenstra up at, at Ibotsi and um, you know, even though I had a, a good season the year before, I still wasn't happy with, I wasn't happy with my game. I wasn't happy with things. And, you know, I came into, um, I came into the 2018, yeah, 2018 season, um, just started working with Grant and I didn't really expect much because we did a couple of changes and I was using the Sunshine Ladies Tour to try and experiment and see what works, what doesn't. And um, is Grant, the person I'm going to be working with because mm. I changed a lot of my team because I just, even though I was playing well, I still felt that something was lacking. I didn't feel 100% happy. And first tournament off the bat, yeah, I won. Yeah. And um, just about able to, to have a season like that at home and to, to share it um, with one of my very dear friends who was a mentor who, who passed away. Um, it was it was tough. I, I mean, even though I had a lot of success at the beginning of the year, there was also a lot of heart, there was a lot of heartbreak. I had a couple of people that I lost last year or so that I had to deal with, and um, to be able to share it with them also, and to and to start the season off like that, and then to carry on into the European season mm. was was something special for me. You've spoken about your challenges as an individual athlete, but what are the biggest challenges do you think women golfers face today? You know, there is a few things like which I don't really want to, I don't really like pinpointing and talking about it. But, um, you know, we play for a lot less money than what the guys do. We probably pay for, play for like 10 times less than what the guys do. And for us, you know, like a guy can, we always say like a guy can play really well in one event. And he doesn't have to feature for the rest of the year and he's made sure. a ton of money and he can easily comfortable like whatever yeah. and for us we have to consistently perform on a good like our form has to be consistent every week because we're not earning the same as the guys mm. and to be able to kind of still have that lifestyle and you know it's it's that much harder and sometimes you know i mean it's it's tough to get sponsorships um there's you know we need more tv coverage on it's all media, you know, that's going to uplift everything. And I think women's golf is in a really healthy state at the moment. And we just need to just try to pump it as much as we can. And mm. I think it's definitely one of the fastest growing sports. And a lot of, a lot of guys and women are starting to, to play it and also watch it on TV. There's, I mean, I have a lot of friends that go, yes, we watch the PGA Tour, we watch the European Tour, whatever. But we actually really like watching women play. We can relate more to them. And, and everything. So I just sometimes I, I find it hard to, I, I struggle with, yes, okay, I don't expect us to be like women's tennis that we play for exactly the same prize fund, but if we can bridge that gap a lot further, you know, mm. at, a lot closer, I mean, um, that would be, that'd be great. Mm. Uh, you mentioned that uh, women's golf in South Africa at the moment, they're, they're in a good space and it's largely thanks to Investec and the, um, the, the property fund that they've put together, the Order of Merit. Uh, but also another thing is what they've managed to do with the SA Women's Open and, mm. having, and the fact that it's now co-sanctioned by the LET. How much of a goal is that for you to one day win that? Oh, to win your national, your home open, national open. I mean, that's, that's always been a dream, you know. I felt short winning the, just, uh, the SA Amateur yeah, one year. Yeah. And to be able to win the SA Open, I mean, yeah, that's a, that would be a dream come true. I'd be, yeah, that's definitely one of my, my goals this year and my goals in the future is to be able to, to keep that trophy at home. And besides at home, what are, what are still the, on your bucket list, as you called it earlier, to do? 
uh, I love traveling and I love doing stuff. So you must so love what you do then because <laughs> I it's, do. it's the same WhatsApp group, like golf and traveling. Yeah, <laughs> I do. Um, it's funny because when I, start, when I started out playing golf and yeah. we spoke a little bit earlier, um, I was so hard on myself and so like I have to eat, sleep, drink golf. Everything yeah. was, I would go to all these cool countries and then never experience you know, like uh, the culture and everything around it. And I think as I've got, grown older and I've realized, um, that's for me something that takes my mind away from golf and mm. it's stuff that I really enjoy doing now. Wow. Just how difficult is the sport of golf? Because you mentioned the, you know, the traveling and the challenges of, you know, just consistently having to perform week in and week out, actually just to make a career out of the sport. Mm. But then you've got the nature of the game, which is all mental, yeah. that you also have to compete with on a weekly basis. Sure. I mean, um, I've had rounds that I feel like I'm schizo. Like I've had, <laughs> I could be sad, happy, neutral. Um, I could be all over the place, you know, and that's the beauty of the game. It's, um, it's so mental. There's, I think there's a saying that goes, golf is 90% mental, 10% mm. mental. You know, because <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's just the six inches between the head. And, you know, especially when you're competing, and when, a, when something is so still, a ball, mm. and you've got to move it, it's not like tennis or any other sport where you react into it. Yeah. You know, you sit in there and you can, you over the ball, and like, you've got so much time to think. And you're like, and, and you know, and, you know, and you're over and you're like, okay, um, yeah, but, yeah, it, but I just love the challenge, you know, because you almost have to sometimes trick yourself into, even if you're not comfortable over the shot and, you know, sometimes there's, there's holes that don't suit you, weather's not great, there's mm -hmm. so many variables in, in the sport. Um, your playing partners could irritate you, your caddy can irritate you, you have a spectator that's, you know, just there's so <laughs> many things, there's so many things that, that can bother you, but you've just got to be able to, she nods. yeah, and just block it out and, yeah. That's and so cool. I know, before we say goodbye also, a, a message to the woman, uh, List, not even listeners, uh, viewers that are watching right now that want to take up the, the, the sport uh, and what they can look forward to from yourself. You know, it's a beautiful game, you know, being out in the nature, be able to, to walk the fairways and, you know, it's... I think people don't give it enough respect, the game. They think, oh, it's like an old man, old man True. sport or it's like a man, it's a man sport. I've, I mean, I've got so many lady friends that go out there, have so much fun. And you can compete with a, you, I can play with someone who's just started golf. I can play with someone who's plays with a 10 handicap, 24 handicap, and we can in, enjoy it. How many sports can you, can you do that in? Sure. There isn't. Because tennis, you're playing against someone. Yeah. You know, golf, you can, you put your handicap and you're out there, you have so much fun with it. And it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not a bad, it's not a bad, uh, bad office for you <laughs> either. Stacey, it's been wonderful having you as our guest chair on the Ladies Club. Thank you so much for coming in. And so, thank you so much for being so frank and open and honest with us. I, I like I that. It, you know? I know. I think you. that anybody that's watching it so, will really be inspired, you know, to actually have a, a really good understanding mm. of what being a professional women's golfer is actually all about. And we look forward to actually seeing thank you as South African champion in the future. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Well, thank that's you. all we have time for for this week. the Ladies Club. Thank you for spending some time with us. Yeah, thank you. And until we meet again, remember, that greatness is always earned and never ever given. Goodbye.